Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for Alpha 2 of Update 90 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we have got a whole bunch of new systemic changes to take a look at and a new toy. Let's start with what's in front of us, though which, uh, and I'm going to grab myself our 226. Let's take a look at what has been added to the paper target system, as I've given this a ton of love this week. We have a new paper target controller here on the left that uh, it re-implements our distance changing uh, a little less glitchily. Let's see, we can clear that. It's more clear when we are setting things up to go to a certain distance. We can reset it, which pulls it right in. It doesn't take a million years <laughs> to get where it's going, unlike uh, in the last alpha. And we can select our target type along with whether we want it to be strong or weak to damage or invulnerable, i.e. where it just decals and doesn't fall apart. And of course, we can hit the reset button anytime we want damage to it to go away. I'm going to pull up the new target type as well for this week, which is a splatter target. Uh, really, really great for being able to see your shots a little further away. Let's, uh, let's put that out to maybe 10 or so. Yeah, that looks good. Hmm, maybe a little closer. Uh, let's see here. Clear. Seven. Boom. I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> I don't want to have to try hard. So the next thing we have to the right is that we have a scoring controller that replaces the prior sort of secondary display and terrible white sheet <laughs> that you just sort of hit with your hand, go boop for a new set. So we've got two sets of options. We can just do open sets, which is just how things worked before. We see our last 15 shots or rather 15 shots for a set and then you have to start a new set to continue getting a score readout for it so i can begin a new set and that will clear it note that this number advances here so i can actually go back i can say do a uh do a set here like so so there's my score for my 15 shots. I can click sheet here and actually see their distribution, including where the last shot was. And I can both with the timings and score go back and forward between sets as well as go back and forward on the display sheet. It no longer shows all of your sort of like an unlimited number of shots like it used to. That's just a limit. That's a performance limitation. And the fact that you can see all the damage you did on the actual target. So I hope that's a compromise that is all right for folks. Let's go to timing. The other way to use this is in shot clock mode. So if we go over to shot clock sets, I'm going to reset the damage on my target. And so basically I can set a 5, a 10, or a random between 5 and 10 second clock tick down from the moment I hit begin new set and I can it will basically give me a buzz sound after that sound the timer will start and we can either do it just a standard count where I can go ahead and have my firearm ready we can do muzzle down which basically the timer won't tick down to begin unless your muzzle is pointed at the ground or you can do empty hands countdown where I have to have nothing in my hands for the clock so let's do muzzle down five seconds Begin new set. Hope this is actually loaded. Terrible. So there you can see the score. The My first shot was a zero. The time that each shot hit at. And the split time-wise on it. You can also see our sheet there. Wonderful. Let's do another. Let's do, let's do this empty hands. I'm going to do terribly at this, especially because y'all are watching. I think I'll do this from the, well, this cowboy side from the, 
from the style, from the side. Boom. There you have it. So yeah, so you can now use this for for just plinking away as normal, but there's also some constraints for uh, for getting your quick sight picture acquisition or uh, for quick draw practicing for this. And I uh, I hope that ends up being useful for you folks. Let's go back to open sets, start a new set, reset that, maybe set it to week, and put you there. Now, let's take a look at the new toy, which is, uh, which is something that I had agreed to put in the game if a number of our Discord community jumped through a, a silly hoop for a silly game for me, which was to make some ridiculous pictures of themselves having tea or coffee with their guns, real or toys. And, uh, and so, finally, I have added the thing that I said I would, which is a 416. Slightly blinged out one. Let's take a look at look at it. I honestly, I'm not a fan of the default 416 stock at all. So this one absolutely captured my eye. It's a really, really well made model, honestly. And to go with it, we have got our 416 style irons, which of course you can pop onto anything with a top rail. It's a four position. So there it is at one, which gives us this, the sort of like trench. Click on it and we get an aperture. There we go. Beautiful. And we got a 60 round drum to go with it. That looks beautiful. So ah, let's do, let's do a, uh, a muzzle down set with it. It's going to be, uh, we're going to, we're going to switch this to the easiest one. This is going to be terrible. <laughs> I had it on full auto. I did not realize I had it on full auto. <laughs> Still decent. Uh, nah, ooh, 1.4 seconds to first shot. That's atrocious. Let's try that again. I'll just do that, so... I don't have it quite as far down. One point three, still terrible, but not quite as terrible. Anywho, so there you go. There is the new toy. Rock that over to full. Ah, oh, it's fun to chew that paper target apart. <laughs> the uh, also a bunch of the area calculation has changed on it. Um, it's even in when it's in strong mode, the damage actually maps pretty one to one with the total amount of area being destroyed in the cell. Whereas obviously in weak, it's co it's coming apart way easier and way faster than it would in real life. It's fairly easy to just cut a line with. Like so. <laughs> Which of course is fun, but when you have it on strong, you will notice that that basically by the time you've uh, a cell is only going to go up by the time you've basically pulverized it. So, even that much short range even though it punched a ton of holes didn't actually blow out any of those cells as well it really shouldn't i mean in real life it would because the muzzle gases are you know close enough but anyway so there you have that other stuff that is important that i want you to take a uh, a look at here let's pull up our options panel we've got a couple things one a uh, a sl slightly swankier look here I made it way more obvious when a specific option is chosen compared to the other ones in terms of luminance we actually get some highlights and you'll notice the laser is actually present whether or not a, uh, a button is being pointed at I'm just slowly trying to tune these up and make them look nicer 
Uh, okay, so couple new things. One, wrist menu mode. A number of folks asked uh, because basically they would oftentimes with their firing hand have the wrist menu come up on it. You can now change this so that it only appears on one hand, left, or both. Obviously you can't completely disable it because then you wouldn't be able to get into the options or quit the scene. Uh, in addition to that, I have made it so that the gravity physics grab flick is now configurable. It defaults to trigger, but we can change it to the grab button if we want it to be. Uh, what else? What else? Ah, this is another one that is not really relevant to the Vive Wands because the, the sort of reloading angle works pretty well for these. Um, but I'm going to turn on momentarily my controller geo while holding things. Basically, different VR controllers have their tracking rings placed differently relative to the hands, and this makes loading handguns specifically better or worse based upon controller geometry. Rift S and Index controllers ha oftentimes have have different problems, but have problems in that like the, the, the Index controllers have a really long bottom that you can end up hitting your fingers uh, on your other hand with, and the Rift S ones have the, just this massive tracking ring on the top. And so what I have done is I've gone back and created an alternate magazine pose angle for each type of controller that attempts to resolve this. It places the mag pretty far off from the controller, but is specifically designed in its position to make it so that you will never contact the controller. So in this case, this, oh, there we go. This is a reloading action that allows me to do this without the controllers being near each other. And one of the ways that I tested this was actually taking like the worst pistol imaginable to reload, which is a jet fire, which is so tiny that half the time I physics grab it from a distance, it doesn't even work well. Eh, 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 eh. There we go. So here, this actually allows you to load some of the smallest pistols in the game. To make this work a little better, by the way, in terms of the fact that the magazine is not on the controller, I have changed the way quick belts work in that instead of essentially selecting a quick belt based upon what the controller is overlapping, like this, it actually picks it based upon the center of the object. So this was something that some people complained about actually with like shotgun shells and things. They would go to overlap, put the shotgun shell over the quick belt. It wouldn't be over it because the controller wasn't over it and they would drop it on the ground. This improves this for all objects regardless of your settings. So... I know this is a bit of a, uh, a controversial change. As I said, for the Vive controllers, it's of limited utility, but H3 is always about trying to provide options to solve problems that folks have from, you know, just because of how many different platforms we have here and how precise the interactions are. Um, and so this is my solution to that. Other games handle this, like, say, Half-Life Alex, by just having a pistol automatically load itself when the mag is, like, this far away from the gun. So, not doing that in H3, but, uh, but this is, this is what I got for you. Cool. And that is use alternate magazine pose angle. This is now no longer for just handgun magazines. This is for, poop all of them. As you can see there. Wonderful. Wonderful. What else? What else? I think that's I think that's all of our new options. Um, I, I actually have my change log in front of me uh, outside of VR. So let's jump out of VR and see what else is different and what has been worked on for this update. Yo, out of VR now. So let's take a look at what else is in our change log. Let's see, we ta talked about the 416. The smooth turning I showed last week is in and the speeds for it are actually sensible now. Before a bunch of folks immediately told me after last devlog, like, yo, 90 is the highest setting is not high enough. And they were right. And so I think I have like either 360 or 540 is the highest setting now. And that did help. Instead of me being sick, like immediately upon using it, 
I was able to test it for like a solid minute before getting incredibly day ruiningly nauseous. So an improvement. Um, so that's in there for you to test. Uh, as for other changes, cover the alternate mag pose, the options panel, the quick belt distances. Oh, a little thing. And uh, Garanda Garand. Uh, end block magazines now actually have the correct sort of pingy clatter when they're empty when they hit things meant to change that a long time ago uh, other fixes fix the center of mass calculation when removing attachments from a gun as i showed you last week fixed quick belts glitching out when you were holding magazine uh mini gun boxes with easy mag loading it took forever to track down what was causing that it was just a missing reference um, I made it so that no low controllers are detected the way they used to be, which is, is as Vive ones instead of WMR controllers. Um, I fixed a couple of the inbuilt lasers not hitting the paper target. Uh, let's see here. Oh, the Bren and the Bren Shorty now have like a bolt in them and sounds for it. I don't know how. I actually looked back. I was like, what's, why isn't the bowl on this making sound? Somehow the sound file for it just blank so no idea how that happened but also has a visible sort of uh, bolt box there as well um fix some incorrect costs for uh, grenades when doing limited ammo and take and hold fix the bliska uh mag um ch -ch -ch -ch. yeah sustenance crossbow and some miss other missing sounds so there you have it um now that the paper target system in the indoor range is pretty much working what i'm going to be doing now is basically filling out content for it so right now the sort of target selector just has three options there the way it's going to work is that there's probably going to be five or six categories at the top level that you'll click and then it will pop you into a selection of targets that are within that category to select from. There's going to be standard ones, there's going to be IPSC regulation ones, there's going to be a bunch of SOSIG ones that I actually authored on stream like two weeks ago and so it'll take us a while to really fill them out. Like I'm not even going to say that all the ones that I want to add will be done by the time we move out of alpha for this update. Um, but just because you both have to author the target and then you have to author this like hidden data texture that defines specific zones for points on it. It's a bit of pain in the butt. But it's now it's a typology of, of content that's going to go in there. And uh, yeah, overall just makes that. And then once it's once it's 100% set, and I know it works fine and is done, it is also going to migrate over to the sniper range as well. I also need to add some options so I can like change its vertical offset as well, so you're not just locked in at a single height. So yeah, I think that's about, yeah, that's it for this week. And that's uh, in terms of what I'm continuing to work on is other stuff related to sandbox play, which I'll get into more uh, next week, because this has already gone a bit long as a devlog, but uh, trust me, it will uh, it will get you folks excited. So uh, continue to let me know if anything is broken. I, ch I changed some pretty major systems in this. It's one of the reasons why the update is as big as it is. I had to like change some metadata on like all magazines um, to make this new post stuff work, uh, but it appears to be working correctly. Uh, but if it isn't, let me know. Steam, uh, Steam forum bug report section, and I will continue to tinker with it. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I'll uh, talk to y'all soon. Peace.